I'm fucking disgusting. Well, carpenters are at least good with their hands. Did you shut the fuck up. Dude, it's fucking disgusting. Those guys here look at the big casino. Well, maybe you should meet them on the corner of happy and healthy. You know, good job, dude. You're hitting on all the books. Now she's toxic and controlling. Having sex makes you a man. Having half sex makes you a man. So, do you think I should eventually get. She's clingy and obsessed. Surrounded by strippers and side hoes, that's the way I want to go. Oh, like I'm gonna listen to you and Mr. Foreskin Wonder over there. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna listen to you and Mr. Foreskin Wonder over there. Oh, I'm gonna listen to you and Mr. Foreskin Wonder over there. Oh, I'm gonna listen to you and Mr. Foreskin Wonder over there. Oh, I'm gonna listen to you and Mr. Foreskin Wonder over there. Oh, I'm gonna listen to you and Mr. Foreskin Wonder over there. You shut the fuck up! And then there was us.
That's what she said to me. And though I didn't respond, I knew that I agreed. And that's what started me on a path so unforeseen. I mean, how could I know I was only 13? I kissed a girl, she did it like a crime, but if I'm to be frank, I try it one time. Wait, no, what am I saying? I should be locked in at home and pray it, pray it away, but there's a delay. So can you blame me if I start straight? No, wait, I can't betray all of the teachings that have paid my way, so that means today that I can't give way to all of these urges to say that I...
sorry about before. I don't want you to feel like you're being replaced in any way, okay? You're still my queen. Come here. <laughs> Ahem! Hey. Hey. Hi. What are you doing? You know we don't talk to her anymore, so why She's my best friend. I can talk to her. Yeah, but she's always trying to get in between us and thinks she can sneak away. I am not doing this right now. Absolutely her. not. You know what? This is all your fault. I knew you were nothing but trouble. You know what your problem is? You can't leave well enough alone. You always find your way to weasel yourself into things. Why can't you tell we don't want you around? Maybe I should dress as Maleficent since I'm the mistress of all evil Maybe I should quarantine myself Since I'm too dangerous for people Maybe I should hide away Never see the light of day Cause I'm the villain in my own life At least that's what they What? Um, sorry. What? Sorry I made you my nemesis. Sorry that you got hurt. Being our competition, well, it made me Sorry, that's what you have to say For getting in my business, stealing my girl away Hey, I didn't steal her She was my best friend And now because of you, that might come to an end See, now your true colors come out now
what? you can and it's okay. Oh this? Yeah, not what you expected, huh? I thought I'd take advantage of the free stage. Contrary to popular belief, I don't always get the best seats in the house. 
It's okay. That was a joke. You can laugh at that. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Laughing is the best part of my day. Wouldn't you agree? Of course, you have to agree, otherwise you'd be a terrible person, right? <laughs> But I'm glad we all have a sense of humor. I'm glad we have that in common. In fact, we have more in common than you might think. I mean, yeah, I'm in a wheelchair and... Yes, I have a disability, but I'm just like you. I still have a brain and a heart, just like you. I know a lot of cool things about things like math and theater just like you. Just kidding. I'm terrible at math, just like you. <laughs> I told you we had a lot in common. My cerebral palsy doesn't make us so different, does it? I mean, none of us are Kardashian fans, right? <laughs> exactly. It's easy to look at me as if I were too different and unusual because of the chair, but if you look around, I'm waiting until you actually do. We're all here sitting in chairs. We're all laughing and we're all enjoying the show my fellow students put on. So yeah, yeah. things may change once you all walk out that door. But for the next hour at least, you're all just like me and I'm just like you. Mama Chair! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know what pisses me off? Mm. No one talks like this yeah. anymore. Yeah. I blame Steve Jobs. May God rest his soul for inventing these stupid fucking portable pills. Yeah. So, a week ago, I went out to dinner with some friends who I haven't seen since the mm -hmm. pandemic started. Do you know? Yeah. These motherfuckers had the nerve to be on their phone the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it gets worse. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, the food comes out, yeah. and after 30 minutes of silence, yeah. I'm ready to eat. So I grab my fork. <gasps> Nicole, what are you doing? Um, getting ready to eat? Yeah. No, but we have to take pictures for Insta first oh, at God. every single angle. <laughs> right. 30 minutes later, my food is frozen. Yeah. But I'm not even mad, right? We're going to the club. After. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> we get to the club, and they're playing all my favorite songs. So I'm like, let's go! Because you've seen this ass. <laughs> Y'all all seen this ass. <laughs> this ass is made for dropping. But everyone's sitting down, recording themselves. Listen. And in that moment, I realized I was born in the wrong generation. I'm sorry, y'all. I was born in the wrong generation. Mm -hmm. So I decided to make a dramatic exit, like so. <laughs> Feel free to watch my ass as I walk away. <laughs> <laughs>
of the closing doors, please. <laughs> Street light shines on the apartments late at night. It almost looks like a sick, pale green. And I can't help but trip on the cracked fucking sidewalks. I'm exhausted. I just commuted for 45 minutes on the G. Yeah, fucking L. I had nothing to do on the train, so I just I thought. I thought about everyone else. Wow, they're living full, complicated lives too. You know, maybe they're just anxious to go home get some rest, or see their families, you know? Or maybe it's this, this commute, that provides some solace, white noise, a chance to just, just zone out from your annoying, shitty family. It's really crazy. Every train arriving in a party can hold a thousand people, a thousand. That's a big enough sample size to chronicle the depth and breadth of the entire human experience, yet we don't pay attention. I mean, there's people going home to true love on the street. Yeah, there's people going home to abuse and despair on the street, too. People going home to expensive brownstone <clears throat> and housing authority projects. Some have no home at all. Yeah, this train doesn't give a shit. It just gets us to the next stop and make a fuss the entire time, clanging, stopping short, roaring. You know, I find it a small miracle that the people on the train don't trip over each other like slapstick comedians at transfers, thrown off kilter at these obscene angles by the weight and heft of the drama and trauma of this human experience. I think about how, by necessity, I have to ignore every single one of these stories because I have a limited capacity for attending my own fucking problems. And I have a party to get to? It makes me feel frivolous. It really does, but I know it's not on me, it's not. It's 8 p.m., I'm an hour early. I just, I need a beer, man, clearly. They act like their reputation depends on this. Act like my reputation depends on this. 250. Thank you, Papa. He has family, friends, a name, all that. Yet to me, just another transaction. Wait, did that guy look at me funny? What about the train lady who would stop screaming? I wonder if they ever wonder about me. If I'm the main character in this story I'll only ever look for another chance to shift blame Upscale branded cafe is more tangible than statistics on front pages. At the start of every financial quarter, do I even know who I'm fucking over? Searching for humanity in a flurry of stock tickers. I mean the lives that change as each number flickers. But I'll only ever look for another chance to shift blame.
station. What are you talking about? I mean, who would think converting a one bedroom by erecting a giant inconvenient wall literally right in the middle of the living room would be a good idea? Now, instead of having one nice bedroom and a living room, you have two half house bedrooms and a kitchen that's also the hallway. Thanks for the reminder. You know, nobody else here at this party would ever think about that kind of shit. I don't know if it's annoying or endearing. Both, hopefully. <coughs> He's here. What? Who? Him. The train guy. The one with the beanie? I bet he's a serial killer. He's not a serial killer. <clears throat> when, when you met him, he was talking to himself on the train. How could you possibly trust anyone you meet on the queue? Okay, well, <laughs> some woman had just spilled her Starbucks. Enough. What's his name? Ben. I don't need the last name, too. Uh, I think it's just Ben Gibson. No underscore? Yes. I mean, yeah, there is one. And two ends. Ben or Gibson? Gibson. Well, his LinkedIn says he works at Chick-fil-A. That's kind of problematic. You're already <laughs> on his LinkedIn? Well, his Instagram is just lacrosse photos, and most of them are blurry. Well, men don't know how to carry anesthetics, so. I mean, I get annoyed that by looking at him. He's dressed like a shitty carpenter. Well, carpenters are at least good with their hands. Ew, that's fucking disgusting. Do you think I should make a move? Can I borrow your bait? Go for it. Of course I'm stuck in Bushwick, like every other college idiot. Looking for conversation that might be worth choking down someone else's cigarette smoke. And it can be so hard breathing them into my lungs, mouthing around stupid shit. I
to just get out of here. Yeah, go! Nobody cares if you're being quiet. Nobody wants to hear your fucking bullshit conversation. Go! And I'm sick of civility. Do they care that it's been days since I've seen my family? But I'm not crazy, I have only been made crazy. And by the same electricity that lifts you up, and it's starting to break me. But I'm not broken, I have only been made broken, you see. To a corner where you can't see me. Listen, people do more than react, they dream. And I wonder if I would earn that respect with a college degree. You might know that if you ever really spoke to me. But you would never ever speak to someone like me. But I'm not angry, I have only been made angry. And by the same electricity that lifts you up and is starting to break me. By the same electricity that lifts you up and is starting to break me. By the same electricity that lifts you up and is starting to break me. And it's 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 starting to break me. to see me, but I guess that's fine. But just because you can't see me doesn't mean it's my job to teeter the line. A place to belong, like I need to hide. Why is it my burden? Why can't you look me in the eye? A topic to be discussed. You made yourself the standard. Of course. And then there was us. You ripped away and took what you wanted. And all that was left was us. So what to do? You might ask. Why is this my problem? For a pyramid to reach the sun, you must tend to the bottom. The backbone of society. We build the world you live in. Without us there to take the fall. The whole structure would give in. Treat us well. Treat us right. We're human too. And what we don't like is feeling like less than our default peers in the world we build. And do it quick. Or this piece will, up to this point, we've been civil. Make the right choice. 
clean up your act. Or before you know it, we'll take the world back. Oh, that'll be a story. You hope God forbids, or someday down the line, we'll be telling our kids we wanted what we owned, what we were owned, and thus went away all those who tried to stop it. And all that was left was us. And all that was left was us. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, how much longer are we gonna be standing out here? As long as we need to. Hey, look at me. Build up the courage, go in there and ask him out. That's it. Easy for you to say. You look in a guy's direction and he comes crawling. Mm -hmm. I swear, she has a magnet in her. Okay, okay, whatever. <laughs> no. Confidence is key. The worst he says is no. I mean, we could always take our business to Walgreens. Or Dwayne Reed. Yeah. What do I even say? I can show you. You come here. Oh. I will have to work with your face. Watch. <laughs> <clears throat> Hey, I don't know if you remember me, but I'd love to get your number. <laughs> What's so funny? Yeah, that should work. <laughs> She's too confident. She oh, should his face. Did that laugh okay, today. that was a good laugh. I'm going in. <laughs> good luck. Shut up. I mean, she needs it. <laughs> this is when I fell in love with Stevie. If Miss Congeniality was from Staten Island, I'm telling you, it would be this girl. <laughs> the best part about Stevie was that she didn't give a shit about school. Motivated in every other way, though. I've never seen someone so effortless in a world where effort was sold like currency. I wish I picked up on it more. Even in her faults, you couldn't be mad. <laughs> hey! Hi! Hi. Um, um, James. Well, Jamie. Hi. James. Well, Jamie. Um, I don't know if you remember me, but I I'd love to get your number. You want my number? On my Snap or my Instagram? You want my number? <laughs> yeah. Number. Looks like someone's ready for commitment. <laughs> Is that such a bad thing? Um, I'll tell you what. We're back here tonight around 8 p.m. I'm going to go on the block for some sushi. How does that sound? Jamie, you can't give me a ride? 
no, we don't want him looking suspicious, and he probably, hopefully, has a car. If he doesn't, dump him immediately. <laughs> okay, fine. See you there. Please don't embarrass me. Drugstore employee? Drugstore? Yes. Drug dealer? No. <laughs> but he preferred small business owner. <laughs> well, <clears throat> but actually, it's my first time asking anyone out. Damn. It's gotta be a really good date. I mean, I can't be the guy who makes you lose all your confidence and then you can't ask anybody else out. Right. You're putting too much pressure on this. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just. I put too much pressure on everything. It's just I have so many goals, and I feel like I don't know what to do about it. Are you in school? College sophomore, studying business. Ah, uh, business major. And you? Well, my mom thinks I'm a psychology major, but really, I'm just taking a bunch of random classes. What do you mean? Well, like, this semester, I'm in drawing, French, Shakespearean lit, uh, astrophysics, and Spanish. Okay, and so you do realize that none of those have anything to do with psych, right? Well, I mean, doesn't everything have to do with psych? Would you put it like that, I guess, but you're not working towards your career, what's the point? No, oh, what, and you are? Fair point, my little astro just... Calm down, it's just an intro class. Well, uh, are we good, madame? <laughs> I am hungry. And this date, our first date, is when I fell in love with Jamie. He has more charm than a Pandora bracelet. And he's absolutely directionless. <laughs> Quite literally. I've never met anyone with fewer goals and desires than him. It's truly impressive. But why do I love him? This conversation right here is when he told me about music. He writes songs. Turns out our Dollar Tree Timothy Chalamet is actually a Dollar Tree Harry Styles. And he inspired me to write a little something about our first date. I regret leaving me. I loved you and I left. Thinking you couldn't take the burden of knowing. Something I don't even want to believe is true. I stole your closure. I'm 
loving my classes. I'm just happy to finally only be studying something I'm interested in. And what would that be? Art history. <sighs> Mom, can you see yourself, please? Honey, there's no money in the arts. Haven't you considered something in STEM if always be the top of your class in school? I can see if you can volunteer at the hospital. Oh, Carol, don't tempt me with a good time. I'll call the nurse I know over there. We'll set you straight. We want you to be a starving artist. With this walk, I could never. <laughs> What's with the attitude? I'm just trying to look out for you. By telling me my degree is useless. That is not what I said. Didn't have to. Um, I'm a finance major. See, Stevie's onto something. Um, Do you care about my happiness? Of course I do, honey. Why would you ask that? I don't know why you're so set on making my life and career choices seem less than just because they don't fit the mold you created. Is it so wrong of me to care about you? You need to be financially stable. What happens if you're stuck in a relationship and don't have your own money? What happens if life throws something at you? Just because what I want to do doesn't fit your definition of success does not mean it's not success. My happiness should be a priority. At the end of the day, you're more a part of my life than my real mother. So you raised me like this. No, I raised all of you girls to find happiness in friends and family and to work for good money. I am just trying to look out for you, Kaya. Mom, okay, stop. What, now I'm the bad guy? No, you're not. She hears you. You just have to let her process. No, I don't need to fucking process. I'm not compromising the one thing that brings me joy to work a job I don't want. Kyle, we all know you won't be compromising anything. That's for sure. There was a compliment under that sarcasm. It, it was, was very deep. deep. All right, let's go back to my room. Please. Thanks, Mom. And with that, I was lucky enough to fall in love three times. I'm assuming my funeral was a snooze fest, so hopefully you're reading this letter all together at the beach. Maybe set up a projector and watch something you know I would love. Love Island, UK, or Australia, obviously. Jennifer's body, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. You know, I hope I inspire some music. I've always wanted someone to write a song about me. And I hope you love me as much as I love you. Plant a sunflower for me, will you? Love, Al. She was so lucky to have you. I'm lucky to have you. There's a piece of her in all of us, and I mean that more than some corny saying. She saw something here, and so do I. I'm sorry. I won't be changing my career, but I shouldn't have lashed out like that. Oh, I know you weren't gonna change anything. <laughs> so, Miss Shami, did you like her anything? Yeah, I did, but it's uh, it's not a song. What do you mean? Well, I journal. Of course you do. I am. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So, you journal. <laughs> yes, and I was going through my book and I actually found uh, the page from our first date. Today I met the love of my life, and I know I claim to meet the love of my life every few months, but I'm serious about this one. Her name is Elle, and she feels like glitter rushing through my veins. Now before I forget, I have to write down exactly what happened on our first date. <laughs> so. So. 
What is your biggest fear? Biggest fear. Mm -hmm. Wait, did you get that off some Twitter dating 101 thread? Uh, 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 no, I'm being serious. Like, what's that one thing you just can't wrap your mind around? Like, when you think about it, your heart stops for a beat and cold rushes through your fingers. That, that feeling. Um, people not knowing what I think. How so? Well, I just want everyone in my life to know what they mean to me. I like to think that they feel it, but there's no replacement for someone's words. That's their voice, literally. I understand. That's actually why I write music. Oh, do tell. Listen, it's, uh, it's nothing revolutionary, but in my case, at least, it's like a mask. And people get so lost in the melody that they seldom listen to the lyrics. So the words I say stay this really intimate thing that they hear, but they're never actually listening to. Do you perform? I've been known to frequent an open mic or two. Nice. I'd love to hear your voice. <laughs> Make sure to listen. You know, I've always wanted someone to write a song about me. Actually, I don't think that would be much of a problem at all. You're probably the most interesting person I've ever met. Thank you. Likewise. that the outcome is not as impressive as one's determination. The will to achieve may mean more than having won. And even if you do not succeed, there is power in having begun. This may be true, but I believe that is the destination and not the journey. It is the strength to not let a single word deter me, or you, or any one of us who sees a promise through. A promise that no prejudice, no misconception, no jealousy or bitterness, no carelessly conceived perception of who we are, is enough to keep us from who we want to be. As we grow older, we learn to move past our traumas, to laugh at and regret our soapbox dramas, and we learn to accept that we will not always reap what we sow. But what we do with our knowledge is more important than how much we know. We advance. We take life knowing it is merely a chance. All of us here have come to this point. Damn. Tell me it is not beautiful. We each found our way to this minute in time. Yes, it is the destination that is truly divine. Thank you. 
line ain't it nice to have the sneaky shots up and down the ad. I feel like rolling. It's safe when you did it. Not like rolling. So y'all better dance. Cause there's music over here. Over there. Over there. Up there. Everywhere. Everywhere. Pouring out the windows of this here renaissance hood Don't they know this the place we went to Houston? Let's talk to Johnson First and Andrew one Riding prices to drive a Cadillac car And out comes the noise Put your ear to the wind and you can still hear their voice From the morning New Orleans to the streets of Illinois That's all them is, that's all them does And we make it, it don't make us Almighty dollar and I we trust From the boombox speakers to the cross town bus Perhaps I'll live here forever, plenty ladies around Well perhaps I'll be a big shot, move my family downtown Past 96th Street <laughs> Perhaps I'll be a rapper, you know Pop's gonna be famous Yeah and I bet six years old will know what his name is Well I heard he gets around and a hat so will we Cause there's a manhood to be found, right here in the 90s <laughs> I can see the dawn break over these earthquakes that makes Harlem shake and landscapes tumble. Sun is on the rise, the streets are still tired. My weekend, my weekend's just beginning. I got five flights to descend on on this road we're set. Five all of my friends begin to walk that mile to the end of this here. Sixth borough. <laughs> Yo, what's up, brother? What up, Frank? Yo, you pull your push ups, bro? I can see you. I can see you. I don't know. Yo, turn around. Woo! Miss Precious come off the sixth train in a short skirt and some hoop earrings. And my, is she incredulous? She's got mountain tops and curves he liked to embellish. With his last name carved in his surface and cursive, her jacket is sagging. And we get a peep of that shoulder. Another clip he's seeking to explore her with kisses and footprints on the kitchen counter. He's looking for a date to inundate her with flowers. So, Brianna, what do you say? I can't talk to you right now, Franklin. Why not? You can't spare two minutes. No, I gotta go meet Francine. You do remember her, don't you? <clears throat> Come on, don't be like that. If you want someone to talk to, when I say Yolanda or Tanya or <laughs> I, 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 I get it, I get it. Do you? Yeah, you're jealous because I haven't been giving you enough attention. Well, what the fuck, here we go again. Well, I still think you should give me a chance. You know, I don't want to treat you like all these other girls, Bree. You're special. You're the only one that I really want to talk to. Can I tell you something real quick? Listen. It's not crass and it's not rude. To say you make a use of these two of you, I like deli wine and Chinese food. Drumsticks, hot fries, every cup of doing oh. it. Me to see, maybe I'm setting the mood like a broke man, cause you ain't got nothing to lose. Don't picture us, while they park. All right. Right. Playing chess till it gets dark. Oh. We put a blanket there, enjoy the cool air, lay up and cut a line the stars. <laughs> now what comes after that, okay. so I'ma let you decide. Uh -huh. Feel when the sun goes down and the heat turns up, you're gonna see I'm a new kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to meet any type of guy at any time of night, Franklin, especially not you. Well, that's because you're scared, girl. But listen, I can change that. You're everything that I've been searching for. I might be too brash, girl, but that ain't a fault. My daddy walked this ad, mama caught him a flirt. But she caught that stray girl, but lo and behold, he said a new pup was born, honey, and now it's your turn. Your turn, your turn, your turn. Yeah, now it's your turn. Your turn, your turn. What's up, Adam? So burnt? Ha, 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 ha. So give me my turn. My turn. My turn. My turn. No good. Down, Judy. Hitting on all the girls. Nasty old pleasure, just like your fucking daddy. Greatest man to ever live. The king of Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be ashamed. Free, calm down. All right? His dad was a legend. Oh, you remember yeah. him? You remember that funeral? Oh, that was the best no. funeral I've ever been to. Tell <laughs> her. Surrounded by strippers and side hoes. That's the way I want to go but I can barely handle one woman. 
Let alone five. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, That's play it. That's nothing to be proud of. Don't any of you care about Frank's mama? That woman's so embarrassed she hasn't left her apartment for years. Hey, 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 hey. My daddy loved my mama, and that's all that matters. He put food on the table, he paid the bills, and that's what matters. Yes, sir. A real man takes care of his lady. That's Amen. right. Amen. So let me take care of you. Ugh. You just shameless, Franklin. Too fresh for your own fucking good. Oh, I'll call you later, beautiful. Dude, why don't you leave that girl alone, bro? Can't you see she's not feeling you getting all in her face all the time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think she likes you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like I'ma listen to you and Mr. Four Skin Wonder over there. Oh, what do y'all to know about girls, huh? I, I know you're not supposed to keep chasing them after say no. Of course you are, Sammy. That's the way it's always been done. And it has. They call us hunters. We hunt the prey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Think of it like this. They call men dogs, right? Mm -hmm. And dogs are descendants of wolves. Mm. Well, wolves hunt, because if they don't, they starve. Yeah, they do. So it's the same thing. Wolves get this feeling deep down in their senses that go out and tell them to handle their business, <laughs> right? You're right, that is, that is science, bro. So if wolves go in the heat, and cats and dogs and horses and all these other animals, why can't we? Why are we forced to deny our natural instinct? Our God-given nature, ain't we animals too? Yes, we are. I just want to know when all these rules came up. Yo, keep asking those questions, Trav. Ask ourselves, because this generation got it all the way to us. You know, you're right, Travis. Girls like Bree, they think they're so much better than us. They think they got it all figured out. Well, my father told me everything that I ever needed to know about women. Listen. He was coughing, sick, dying in bed. The hospital pillowcase under his head. It smelled like Ammonia. He pulled me close to his side and said, Son, I gotta warn you. Don't be fooled by society that constricts you to monogamy. It's a lie. He said, Get more girls now when you won't cheat down the line. Wives are tough tasks and good ones are hard to find. So test the waters, dear. Try to bide your time. Out of all the mistakes to make, please don't make mine. So think long and hard before you buy the ring. To kill a man's lust is no easy thing. And your mother was a dream, and I should have treated her better. But I settled down too quick and couldn't keep us together. But yes, she stayed. So if you want a solid marriage, satisfy the vice. With every notch put on the bed is one less sleepless night. It'll clear out your head and it'll puff out your chest. A man lives off conquest, sex, and respect. So we plow the fields and we sow the oats. The harvest is plentiful as the good Lord wrote. Go on and pick the fruit now while you're young. And I'll rest easy knowing you got some. <laughs> My father conquered them all. He was the master of women. He could yell out and call and best believe they would listen. With a wave of his hand, he had the upper advantage. He been on his time, gave you ready, gave me can't manage. Whoa! Everyone's got a hill and this one I climb. We're all made to prosper in our own time. The Lord walked the water, but I walk all nights. He had his turn, boys, and now it's mine. My turn. My turn. My turn. My yeah, turn. Yeah, now it's my turn. My turn. My turn. My he turn. might have come first. First, 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 first. But now it's my turn. My, my turn. turn. Wait, 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 my wait, wait, turn. Wait, 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 wait. That, does, that just seems like bad advice, man. Listen, listen, bro. Don't be mad because girls don't want you and your Sammy Davis Jr. with the turtleneck. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Dude, you know <laughs> Wait, but wait. <laughs> Girls really care about that stuff? No, Sammy. Women care more about important things. Of course they do. Listen, girls are like, they're like kids with cereal boxes. They don't want to have to go digging around to the bottom to find out what the toy is. They want it right there up at the top, ready to open. What? It's true. It's true. <laughs> sure is. Wait, 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 wait. So, do you think I should eventually get What? What? Bro. Bro. No. No. That's your Sammy Davis Jr. You got to put him up to a bunch of girl, right? Well, Nicky boy over here don't know nothing about pleasing no girl, so I wouldn't listen to him <laughs> if I were you. I tried, I tried. Guys, can we just change the subject, like seriously? Why? 
Sammy need to notice if he gonna be a man. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm right. Having sex does not make uh -huh. you a man. Uh -huh. Come on, not this again, bro. It's true, Sammy. Listen to me, okay? Your body is just as important as any woman's. Don't go changing that for other people. You gon' give him a training bra, Nat? Yeah, why not just tattoo forever virgin oh, on his forehead? Come on, come on, come on. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> if having sex makes you a man, right? Yeah, okay. it's gonna be good. Having half sex must make you half man, right? What the fuck? Oh, <laughs> what? No, bro, I'm sorry. Yo, this is not hard. I'll explain, I'll explain, I'll explain. So I was with this girl this one time, right? This one? We was getting far, right? We got really close, but not all the way, per se. Per se? Per se? We was, we, <laughs> we, you know, we was in there. Sorry. What is wrong with you, Nick? You are like 17. What have y'all been doing? I've been playing Sonic, Smash Bros. 2K. That's all you've been <laughs> smashing <laughs> lately? <laughs> bro, you're so cool, bro. How'd you lose it? Me. When did you become a man? Yeah, you. Oh. You saw you want to hear this story, bro. Talk that talk, Travis. Come on, T Dog. All right, I got it. I'm done. <laughs> Come on. Well, I was 15, short, cute, and mean, and mommy was hotter than a chicken wing. She had a belly out, a big old mouth. I took her right there on her mama's couch. So I knew I was short, but my game was long. long. I kicked this into the curb. Oh, my body even ended me, so I'm a user. That's why I'm especially a two with the light skins. I like to keep them in a picture like a white man. I want my girl with eyes like diamond, blonde hair, blue eyes, and a tight hair. Like the gym that respects the black man's experience. You want to trade up, gotta kick that innocence. Now all the girls want to hang since I lost mine. And I owe it all to my first time. My first time. My first time. The girls want to hang since my first time. A man that a man on, to bro. be bust the line Jump up as he fed, till the water's fine My first time, my first time Jump up as deep as man, the water's fine Yo, you sound just like my dad, T! What a surprise! Hey. My whole sick alive! Yo, Travis, what's up, bro? Yo, 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 a man's a man by his birth certificate. No woman can make or break that fact. You don't get man points for doing sexual acts. My first time was short and sweet. I was nervous to lose it. And so was she. I should have never given in easily. But we were told we had to prove our loyalty. Now, I have a son. He just turned three. I love him because he's the best part of me. Oh, yeah. But sex ain't free and sex ain't cheap. I lost more that day than my virginity. You hope to get out. God gave me a gift in my own son. But parents and they were trying to get you something. Yeah, yeah. There's plenty of mistakes that we learned from mine. There's a lot to consider, man, when you're first time. Your first time, your first time. There's a lot to consider, man, when you're first time. A man's not a man if he can't provide. Oh, Motherhood is forever, Sam, dead or alive. Your first time, your first time. Father is forever Sam, dead or alive. Now when it comes to girls, you know I got him beat. First time was my sister, she was 17. I knew I was fly, I knew I was fine when I took that dive at the age of nine. Oh. I know it's crazy, but I guess she must have really liked me. Some men just got it. <laughs> That's the thing, Frank. You weren't a man. You were a kid. Well, I wasn't that much of a kid if she really liked me. It doesn't matter if she liked you. You couldn't technically consent. Consent? <laughs> Bro, I was a kid. You think I was going to sign some contract or some shit? What's your point? Bro, I think his point is that she took advantage of you, bro. But y'all think I was like molested or some shit? <laughs> Man, y'all kill me. <laughs> I'm serious, Frank. This is what she did to you doesn't even sound legal. Ooh, what we did was illegal. <laughs> Rape isn't funny. Nah, man, don't y'all go putting ideas in his head like that. He said it was consensual, so it was. She wanted him because he's a real man. Real men don't get mm -hmm. See, that's what these guys don't understand. They don't understand that it's normal to experiment. Experiment? Did you even know what sex was at that age? Yes, I did. My dad told me. Did he yours? No. 
Right? And see, that's the problem with men nowadays. They're being taught to be like little bitches, not learning what's the basics of what's going on inside of them. The basics? The basics are that only adults can consent to sexual relationships. And there's no way that you did that, Frank, at nine, and she's eight years older than you. But what if she had a disease? Bro? Yo, why y'all making it weird, though? Weird. Bro, why y'all making it weird? Back the fuck up. Drop Back it. the fuck up. Drop it. Drop Daddy, it. I have to go pick up my kid again. I'll see you guys later. Yo, Frank. Stay up. Nah, we'll, we'll come with you. Yo, Don't listen to none of that stuff Saul was saying, man. He's dumb. He got his girl pregnant, and now he thinks he's everybody's daddy. But you never catch me in a situation like that. Nah, not me. Nishi tried to throw that rape word around after she got pregnant. I told her I was leaving, and she told everybody I forced her. Bag that. I told her you want me to stay and get rid of it, because I ain't having no kids. But that's the thing about sex. Everybody's down until it's over. Then they want to act like they didn't know what it was. Right. Everybody know what it is. So don't let Sal make you feel bad for doing what you had to do. He's just jealous you still get in play. Right. Speaking of play, I got to go call Nisi. You got a quarter? <laughs> Thanks, man. Saul and Sammy don't know what they're talking about. They don't get that I matured faster than them. They're just mad that I was getting played when I was young and I'm still getting it. My dad showed me videos when I turned six. Girls had pink lips and soul food fed hips. I laughed in a chair as I sat on the floor watching as they did things I'd never seen before. After we was done, he put his finger to his lips, urged me not to tell my mother about this. I went to bed thinking about girls and their hips, wondering why I felt so weird watching him share a kiss. I was nine when the first girl touched me there. Rebecca was her name, she wore braids in her hair. She spoke sweet, sounded just like my mama, before she put her cold hand down my dinosaur pajama. soft skin and her telling me to hush it must have ended sometime because she quickly left the room saying remember now franklin this is between me and you i pulled the blanket up and placed it over my head little did i know i was no longer innocent i told my dad months later about Rebecca's frequent touching. He pat me on the back and said, A man you're becoming. There's no shame in being wanted, and it's a gift to be like us. Some men spend their whole lives without feeling, feeling a woman's touch. But you're a lucky son of a gun, he said with a smile. And so the visits, they went on and didn't stop for a while. So why are people so touchy about touching these days? Intent is consent, and it's better that way. I'm too mad to be a victim. You can't steal what's been given. I know deep down, wanted her hands on me. As men, all we need is one, one opportunity. 
Because sex is as sex does. Then we have it. It don't have us. Yo, hey, Bree, what's going on? Uh, nothing, Franklin. Is this about earlier? I, I wasn't trying to be fresh or nothing. It's okay, forget about it. Well, uh, uh, well, maybe I can take you to Jimbo's if you're free tonight. We can, you know, get a cheeseburger, talk a bit. I don't think that's a good idea, no. Is this because of earlier? Listen, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to spit game at you or nothing. I, I just, I really want to talk to you. And now how I talk to Tanya or Francine and I'm, because I'm not flirting or Francine's anything pregnant. like that. What? Yeah, that's the reason why she wanted to meet me today. She said that she's two months late and the last time you guys did it, you didn't use protection. She didn't know how to tell you, but I knew you'd want to know. Hey, look, we can go talk about it if you like. I can buy you the cheeseburger from Jimbo's. Nah, it's all right. Uh, I'll catch you later. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, call me if you want to talk about it, though. <sighs> Daddy-O once said that I'm a lucky son of a gun because every man on the planet wants to be like us because we can, we can have our way and even if it's a sin, he made sure no one ever took advantage of him. So now I've seen the earthquake and He's left us in the rubble. I know he never did cause my mother nothing but trouble. And I know deep down in my soul lies the last of his imprint. But as God is my witness, I will make sure my son has his innocence. Because there's so much to lose. Dad's with your first time. Now I see the day break and there's so much to unlearn because a new pup is coming, boys. And now it's my turn. is my Oscar for putting up with this pandemic and acting like ain't shit happened. I watched a city that never sleeps go into a coma. Every time I try to sleep, I would hear sirens, so I stayed up, watched TV, tried to teach myself how to tap dance, played with my old American girl doll. Anything I could to pretend that thousands of people weren't dying every day and that I could be next. never stopped to mourn, to heal. We just kept going to Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting. And now it's a year later and my brain still hasn't processed all the crazy shit that happened because, 
because it's still happening. But everyone wants to act like this is normal, that we're getting back to normal, so fine. I'll act like it too. I just want my fucking Oscar. I want my fucking Oscar. Where's my fucking Oscar? Has anybody seen it? You? You? Anybody? I know how you feel. It reminds me of something Walt Whitman wrote. Oh, me, oh, life. Of the questions of these recurring. Of the endless trains of the faithless. Of cities filled with the foolish. Of myself forever reproaching myself. For who more foolish than I, and who more faithless. Of eyes that vainly crave the light. Of the objects mean. Of the struggle ever renewed. Of the poor results of all of the plodding and sordid crowds I see around me, of the empty and useless years of the rest, with the rest me intertwined. The question, O oh me, so sad, recurring, what good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? Answer, that you are here, that life exists in identity, that the powerful play goes on, and you may contribute the verse. Simply live. That's the important thing to do.